Hello and welcome to this video on researching. This kind of goes over some basic concepts, not necessarily how to research, but the concepts of researching. So let's say you are in a class and your teacher says you need to research a topic. Okay, well, there's some good ways to do this and some bad ways to do this. Okay, first thing you want to do is analyze the research task. Okay, now some people are like, no, I don't want to analyze. I don't like doing research. Yeah, okay. Some people like doing research. It's just their thing. Some people don't. But uh, you can really save yourself a lot of grief by kind of figuring out, okay, what do I need to research? That'll narrow down sifting through a lot of information um, that you need to go through. So, for example, Consider who is your audience. If this is a college paper, your audience would be for your professor or professional or academic audience. More than likely, if you're writing a research paper, that is uh, who you're writing for. Or maybe you're doing a research task and it's going to be written for uh, professionals who already have a basic understanding of the concept you're going to be going over. Um, so if you work in, let's say, the psychology field and you're doing a research task on um, you know, some aspect of psychology, you can assume that, and your audience is other psychology people, then more than likely they understand the basics of psychology. Yeah, anyway. Um, also, what is this length, scope, and requirements of the research? Um, do you have to write a, you know, 20 page paper? Is this going to be a big, huge research thing that's going to take you years? Is it something you can do in an afternoon? Um, you need to consider that. So, again, generally you'll have an idea before you get started of how much you're going to want to cover. Like, for example, if you're in a class, it may be a two-page paper, and you need five sources. So that would be the length, scope, and the requirements. Okay, and another good idea is to plan ahead. Set a schedule for researching and writing. Okay, if you're trying to sit down and research and then write it, not necessarily a good idea. Um, research, which should be done, in my personal opinion, um, before you even start writing, you want to do your research and then let it kind of sit in your mind and let it kind of work its way out and then sit down at a different time and start writing. So that is not a good schedule. So, you know, schedule doing research on one day, then a couple days later start writing. Maybe that's the way to do it. Okay. Now, you have to identify a researchable question. Sometimes that researchable question is given to you by your uh, professor or your boss or something like this, or sometimes you have to figure it out. Um, like, well, what can I research? Okay, sometimes you can research things and sometimes you can't. Sometimes there are questions that just aren't researchable. Okay, um, yeah, let's give an example. Once you've settled on a topic, it is important to identify a researchable question. Which will be the focus of the remainder of your research? Example, if your topic was on gun control in the USA, what is a question you can ask and find research about the question? So if they give you the topic gun control, okay, well, if you just search gun control, you're going to see all sorts of things. So you need to find a researchable question, like uh, perhaps uh, countries that have stricter gun control laws, how has that impacted crime? See, that's something you could research. Or, um, you know, let's see, what would be another example of a researchable question when it comes to gun control? Which, which states have the most lenient gun control laws and what is crime like in those states? Something like that. Okay, there you go. Now, there's a difference between primary and secondary research. Okay, so for a lot of um, research papers for college, you're going to be using secondary research. Sometimes if you uh, you're more advanced, you do some primary research. Well, what's the difference? Okay, oh, look, I'm looking for stuff. Look, I'm doing research. Oh, look at me. Look how excited I am. Okay, moving on. Okay. Research you do yourself is called primary research. So now, that's not to be confused with, oh, I went and looked in a book and I found this, so I did that research. No, that's not, no, that's not what we're talking about. Um, it's like you're conducting the actual study. You're doing the testing and gathering the data and, and stuff like that. That's primary research, okay? Research based on the work of others is called secondary research. So if you go back to the gun control thing, maybe someone's already done, written a paper on... Um, how, you know, strict laws in certain countries have affected um, the gun control uh, or the violence issues. And so you could reference their work. Another, okay, here's an example. So let's say if you're trying to figure out who likes, you know, which is more preferred, Coke or Pepsi. Well, if you went out and you pulled in 100 people and you each 
kind of did this blind taste test where they tasted Coke and then they tasted Pepsi and then you recorded the results, that would be primary research, primary, because you are kind of doing the, the research yourself. If you find the internet where someone's already done this test and you're just saying somebody already did this test and this is what their findings would be, that would be secondary research. Oh, okay, there's a difference. Now, when you're starting to work on your paper or your research, you should have a working thesis. Okay, now working, you understand here, is in quotation marks, and that is for a reason, okay? Because everything is subject to change. Sometimes you may go into your paper or your research, and you may have an idea of what you're going to be doing, and then you do research and realize, ah, maybe that's not what it's going to be after all, okay? But you still should have a working thesis for your subject because you need to know, basically, it will most likely change after you do your research because you may find things that surprise you, and most likely you will find things that surprise you or are different than what you first thought, okay? However, you need to have at least a working thesis to head you in the right direction. If you just start researching just stuff in general without a general idea of what you're trying to do, you can get so bogged down in information it'll drive you nuts. So you need to be you know, having that working thesis. Now, let me give you an example of a working thesis story. Um, so, I once went to a daddy-daughter activity with my daughter, uh, one of my daughters, and um, the activity was that we were going to build paper airplanes. And we were outside in this uh, pavilion, and they had paper and tape and glue and crayons and scissors. And uh, basically, they were the rules where you could use whatever you could find in the pavilion to create a paper airplane. And then at the end, the daughters would then throw their paper airplanes and see how far they would go. And they would measure that. And then the dads would take their paper airplanes and throw them and see how far they could go and they would see who had the difference um, and then you add up you know whatever well I want to look good for in front of my daughter so do all their dads and I'm not particularly skilled in um, these kind of matters of paper airplanes and so my daughter starts working on her paper airplane and she's coloring on it and you know it kind of looks like a piece of paper that's been folded in half with maybe some wings something and okay <laughs> hers isn't going to fly very far. It looks nice, but it's not going to fly very far. And I'm looking over at other dads, and they are, you know, some of them are engineers, and they're measuring, and, you know, and they're taking, you know, they're looking at diagrams of aerodynamics, and I'm thinking, oh, there is no way I'm going to be able to make a paper airplane that's going to compete with theirs. So, uh, when it came time to, uh, so I had a working thesis, I started building an airplane, and I started working on it, and I realized this is just not going to work. I had a general idea. And as I was working on my paper airplane, I got an idea. So when it came time to actually do the competition, you know, the, the, the daughters went first. And, yeah, my daughter's plane looked really cool and went about three feet. Um, and I was very proud of her. Um, so then some, you know, I was towards the end as far as dad's going. And uh, so, you know, some guys, you know, they make these fantastic, amazing airplanes which just floated and floated and flew and flew. And I was just blown away. So I get up there with my really crappy looking paper airplane. It looks like it's about to fall apart in my hand. And the other dads, I mean, they were nice guys, but they're kind of looking at me like, oh, this ought to be good. So I'm about to throw my paper airplane, and I stop. And instead, I reach into my pocket where I've taken another piece of paper, and I have wrapped it around a rock, which I found in the pavilion. Because the rule said you could use whatever you could find in the pavilion. So I had taken this piece of paper, I had wrapped it around a rock, and I had taped it, and then I threw it, and it went three times as far as any of the other paper airplanes. So, yay. Smart. Anyway, but the idea is if I had stuck with my original thesis, I would have not done well. I came up with an idea while I was working. There we go. Okay. So the best places for research? Well, not Google. If you just Google stuff, you will get lost. There is so much information on Google, it'll drive you nuts. Okay. Avoid using these for research. YouTube. Don't do it. Wikipedia. Never. Never, never use Wikipedia for research. Bing, Yahoo, these are the search engines. Uh, Snapchat, yeah, don't do that for uh, research. Okay, so what should you use? Use the library resources. Um, and because, why should you avoid these popular web sources? Because they are biased. Okay, I'm looking for a copy of the New York Times. Will that be in the fiction section? Just because it's, you know, can seem literary doesn't necessarily mean it is. Okay, you want to avoid bias. Okay, you need to double check your facts. So again, the best place to find good resources is if you have a college, if you are at a college, there's all sorts of, um, go to your college library, they've got 
online uh, sources that link you to um, verified, certified, good, researchable websites. Um, that would be the best place to go. And I have to be very general here because it depends on you know who you are and what access you have. So it, each school has different things. But if you just Google the information, you're not going to find a lot of good information. And definitely don't do use a Wikipedia because that's not going to be a good thing. So hopefully you understand the concept of research. And there you go. Wow.